So next thing we will do is get the teeth in it so we can fit it to the chuck. Um, but first I will do a test on my prototype port made of um, these, this um, ran shape material. This is the template we will use to machine the teeth in the jaw blanks. I just jigsawed it out of 3mm phenolic. Right now I'm finishing or hand finishing the template so I get a smooth finish uh, when I run the stylus of the pentagraph over it. This is the finished template. It will go onto this base with these two holes for double pins. And in the center is a hole that we will use to align the template with the actual workpiece. So, <coughs> so we are over at the pentagraph machine and I have my my test piece or my prototype jaw already clamped up and attempt in cutting the teeth as our first one was not good. Back at the bench and the jaw actually fits pretty nice. It goes in and it just rides along the scroll pretty pretty fine.
Okay. okay, that's it for the finishing pass and now I'm going to chamfer the top of the teeth. I'm using a 90 degree single lip cutter for this. So, now we have all of the three jaws on the teeth side finished. And if we take a closer look, we can see that the teeth are offset from jaw to, from jaw, to jaw by one third of the pitch of the spiral. Um, the pitch of the spiral is also the distance between the teeth. So this, this distance is 5 mm and the offset between each jaw is 1.67 mm as um, stated before. So let's try these out in the chuck. Number one, find the, find the start of the scroll, insert it. Advance, advance the scroll to the next slot, take the second jaw. Put it in. And the last one. And as you can see, same, they meet up very well in the center. In fact, Just out of curiosity, I'll take a feeler gauge with a piece uh, with a 500 shim. There is no gap. There is no gap. There is one. Yeah, this is a gap of pretty exactly one tenth of a millimeter on this jaw but that, does, um, that doesn't matter for me as I'm going to bore out the jaws when I'm finished so I get a perfect run out and um, will not have any problems to deal with anymore. Over the shaper and now we're going to cut the chamfers on this and this edge um, I have this 45 degree angle block or 90 degree angle block um, but it's wider than my part so if I put it in the vise and my part on top of it I can't clamp the part the vise will only hold the V block so what I'm going to do I put the part into the vise And I'm going to tighten it almost. And then I move my table away a bit so I have space to work. And now I'm going to put my V block over it so it rests on the jaws of the vise. Now I'm going to. Can you see this? Now I'm going to push my part up against the jaw, uh, the V block from below and clamp it in place. This is not a precision setup, this is just for cutting the I chamfer. could also swivel the tool head of the shaper to cut a 45 degree chamfer, 
but I couldn't use the power feed with it. So as I have to do three of these jaws, two chamfers each, um, I prefer to use power feed and invest a bit more time with it. Okay, this was the last cut on the third of the jaws. That means we have done all these bevels on all the jaws and now I'm going to deeper the teeth and the slot. Deepering is a matter of handwork. I'm going to use my needle files and I'm just breaking the edges on these teeth. Okay, final touch will be with emery cloth. I will round over these edges a bit and pull it. Okay. Now we have our three jaws almost finished. Um, the teeth are cut, the profile fits our three jaw chuck and um, everything is deepered. Also the front is chamfered though the, though the jaws can meet up in the center. And the smallest diameter, these jaws can chuck is about mm, two millimeters. Um, the last step that has to be done is to cut these steps onto it. I'm not sure yet if I'm doing this on the milling machine or on the shaper, but maybe I will I will stack the parts up and do it on the shaper. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it for now. We will see you again in part three when we finish the chores. Thank you for watching.